Hi everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine, a plant-based fitness nutrition company. First, the disclaimer, this video is for informational and educational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So, you know, everybody asked me since I've been vegan for my 39th year vegan. <laughs> yeah, so the very first question that most people ask is where do you get your protein? But right next to that, people say, where do you get your omega-3s? Well, the assumption is that all omega-3s come from fish and they don't. Most people are now know that omega-3s can be found in plants, but there's a different type of omega-3s that are found in plants than are found in most animal products. So EPA and DHA are common in fish and animal foods, whereas ALA is prevalent in, and SDA are prevalent in plant foods. Okay, so there's this big concern um, about ALA conversion to DHA. So the conversion goes ALA, it gets converted to SDA, then ETA, then EPA, then DPA, and then finally at the very bottom of the conversion chart is DHA. So there's a big concern that ALA does not convert sufficiently enough to DHA. So why is that? <laughs> well, it's based on studies that looked at the amount of conversion that is happening in the blood. At first, they looked at blood plasma. That is the whole blood. So see how much free omegas, and it goes way up when you consume uh, omega-3s, and it depletes because the body takes it out and stores it in cells. So that's called clearance when it clears out of the bloodstream and goes into tissues and is used or stored for later use. Okay, so ALA then converts to all of the different forms, all five other forms, SDA, ETA, EPA, DPA, and DHA. So you've got five different forms besides the sixth one, ALA, on top. Now, most of the research shows that this only happens about 1% going from ALA all the way to the bottom rung at DHA, only about 1% of the blood. Well, that would mean you'd have to take a lot of ALA, which actually a healthy plant-based diet can do, but that's not the point. So they're saying that only 1% is converted in the blood. Then they looked at actually red blood cells because they're saying, hey, wait a minute, how much is actually absorbed into the red blood cells? So the next question was, okay, let's take a look at that. Well, the interesting thing is when they started looking at red blood cells, the more ALA you took, the less DHA actually showed up in red blood cells. Now, why is that? Well, check out my video um, that is titled, uh, Are Omega-3 Blood Tests accurate. Now, this is looking at red blood cells. So what was going on? Okay, so we know, I'll just uh, summarize that video for you. So we know that red blood cells go into the heart, obviously, and that the heart actually uses ALA uh, for specific purposes and mostly EPA for specific purposes, not DHA so much. So the heart doesn't need that and the blood is constantly circulating through there. So what I theorize is happening is actually that the body is, the red blood cells are kicking out DHA and putting in ALA, which can readily convert to EPA. So we, we know that ALA readily and sufficiently converts to EPA. That's not the issue. The big question mark was, does ALA convert all the way down to DHA? And what they found in the blood was 1%, which may not be sufficient enough. So this was the big thing to say, all the meat eaters out there saying, ha ha, see, I told you, can't get enough omega-3s from plants. <laughs> wrong, because <laughs> they were looking in the wrong place. So researchers just recently, and I, I'll be talking about this study more lately. So what they did is they looked at carbon isotopes. So uh, long chain fatty acids are long chains of carbon atoms. So like omega-3s are called the C20 or C22. That's 20 carbon atoms all chained together. That's why they're called long chain fatty acids. 
So this carbon leaves a footprint, leaves a fingerprint, and you can actually measure that fingerprint to see how much ALA is actually being converted to DHA. Well, when they did that, they found there was up to 50 times much more uh, synthesis of ALA to DHA than what was happening in the blood. Okay, so this is finally, finally, finally going to put to rest this myth that you cannot, that human beings, like all other herbivores, cannot convert enough ALA to DHA to meet the body's needs. That's just not true based on the new research. So thank God we have this new research that's been that finally proves what I've been saying for the last 20 years. Uh, look, I've been vegan for 39, this is my 39th year of vegan. I have never taken in that 39 years a preformed uh, EPA or DHA supplement, obviously not from animals and definitely not from fish and, and not even from algae. So in 39 years, if I was not getting sufficient DHA, my brain would just shut down basically. The brain is the greatest storehouse of DHA. Now our body stores up to 50 grams of DHA, so we've got plenty of it, but where does it come from? Okay, so now that we have the research showing that there's no need to take a DHA supplement, none, zero, then the question is, well, wait a minute, why then do studies show when you take a DHA supplement, you get improved effects? Okay, so here are some of the reasons why that could be showing. So one, number one, is the subject sufficient in intakes of ALA? Okay, that's really important. Now, number two is we now know that when you consume ALA, it will convert. But if you consume preformed EPA or DHA especially, it actually shuts down the enzyme. Our body shuts down the enzyme. Says, hey, wait a minute, I've got enough DHA coming in from food. I don't need to. So this makes ALA not convert, only convert down to EPA and stop, and it starts to pile up as EPA. So the body has a way of shutting down overproduction of DHA, and there's a good reason for that, and I'll get to it in just a second. But now we're looking at the body's amount of DHA. Okay, so deficiencies. If you're deficient in DHA and take a DHA supplement, of course you're going to get improved results because you're deficient to begin with. Now, number two, what is the need for the DHA? If you're a healthy body, you may need just a little bit of DHA to resort to inflammation because a healthy body with lots of plants and antioxidants and polyphenols and, and, and the butyrate that is generated from fiber uh, consumption, these all reduce the inflammation. So you don't need that much DHA to reduce inflammation. Now, if you're eating a bunch of crap and you're eating a bunch of animal products rich in arachidonic acid, this pro-inflammatory, now you get a lot of inflammation, so you're gonna need more DHA. Okay, so in animal people eating the, people eating the standard American diet, with lots of animal products and lots of processed foods are going to have high inflammation in their bodies. So they're going to need higher amounts of DHA. Those eating a plant pure diet, rich in antioxidants and polyphenols and all these things that bring down inflammation will need less DHA. So when you've got somebody with a high need because their body is just pro-inflammatory all over the place with disease states, you're going to need more DHA. So again, taking a supplemental DHA would show positive effects because the body has so much more need from it. But that's not the problem. You're looking at the solution from the wrong end. The, wrong, the right end is to eat more plants and bring that inflammation down so you don't require taking that extra DHA or getting that extra DHA from outside of the body. And then number three, is DHA that you consume actually getting to the target? So this is the study I want to talk about. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the study in here on the on the screen. I'll copy and paste it into the comments section. So those of you watching, there we go. And I will, as soon as it pops up, I'm going to put it up on the screen here. That way you can look up the study and follow along. Now, this study is 
got a lot of real science terminology in it. So if you're not big into reading research, you're, you're probably not going to get a lot of the gist of this because it's a deep science study. It's not a not for the lay person to read. But basically what the study is, is this is a brand new study. You can see it came out in 2023. The title of the study is Deficiency in Omega-3 Lysolipid Transporter, MFSD2A. This is the name they've given to the transporter that, that allows DHA to transport into the brain, to get across that blood-brain barrier. Okay, so this can, if you are dysfunctional in this transport, you're not going to be able to let or allow DHA to get into the brain. Why is this important? Okay, let's look at the direct quote. So uh, MFSD2A is the primary transporter for DHA and ALA to get into the brain and cross the blood brain barrier. Okay, what happens if that transporter is inhibited? Quote, defects in MFSD2A are linked to ailments in behavioral, learning, motor dys dysfunctions, and severe microcephaly. Micro meaning getting small <laughs> and cephaly meaning brain. So this is brain shrinkage. Brain shrinkage can lead to all kinds of different problems that we don't need to go into. Um, so this transport is a key gateway of not just how much ALA you're intaking or how much endogenous ALA is being converted to DHA, which we now know is totally sufficient in uh, plant-based eaters. You need a plant-based diet rich in ALA, get tons more conversion to DHA than you actually need. The study that just came out, I'm sorry, I can't talk too much about that particular study yet because it's not released in full print until, but I, I got to read it and got to see it thanks to knowing some of the researchers that worked on it. Um, but this study actually showed that most of the DHA conversion that happens when you consume ALA getting converted into DHA. And then what happens to that DHA? Most of it gets burned up and used for energy. Why? Because we store so much DHA, the body is only just replenishing storage. It's not actually turning it into DHA to actually use it right away, although it can. It's, 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 just replenishing the storage. Remember, our brain uses about two to three and a half milligrams of DHA per day. Two and a half to three and a half milligrams of DHA usage per day. Our body stores 50,000 milligrams of DHA. So it's pulling from the storage and feeding the brain on an as need basis. Why is the body storing so much? Because it wants to make sure the brain has enough even when there is times where there is food scarcity, or there is challenges, where there is starvation periods, where the human being can't get enough, it has enough to keep the brain going, so it stores a whole bunch to make sure that it, we never run out. That's an important thing. But getting that DHA, whether it's coming from stored or immediately available by eating it through an, eating an animal product like fish, does it get into the brain? That's the key. And that's how I, this important study just out in 2023 identified this transporter, right? Okay, so what could possibly inhibit that transporter from functioning well? <laughs> I'm going to put this on the screen because it's that important. There it is. So according to the study published in Nature Communications, dietary saturated fat impairs DHA transport into the brain. So the very saturated fat that you're consuming from meat, dairy, eggs, is actually inhibiting your body's and your brain's ability to bring that DHA into the brain.
saturated fat. The vast majority of saturated fat comes from animal products, although you can get it in things like coconut or peanut, small amounts, nothing compared to what you'd get in a typical uh, dietary regimen of an omnivore's diet or the standard American diet, which is loaded with saturated fat from animal products. So we see, once again, doing a low fat, whole food plant-based diet with that limiting that saturated fat can help the body use that transport and efficiently take that DHA into the brain where it can actually be used. And consuming animal-based saturated fat can inhibit that from happening. And even if you're consuming enough DHA, you can have high blood levels of DHA. But if it doesn't get to its target, if it doesn't get to the brain, what good is it? That's the most important part. It's not how much you eat. It's how much your body can actually use. This research is so important because it sheds light once again why a low-fat, whole-food, plant-based diet can help. So what are the top five? Let's go ahead and bring that picture up. These are the top five sources of saturated fat. Cheese, number one, <laughs> loaded with saturated fat. Beef, loaded with saturated fat. Uh, fats and oils, that's getting them from uh, saturated fatty oils, not a good thing. Milk, uh, unless you're getting fat-free milk. It is, whole milk is loaded with saturated fat. And of course, frankfurters, sausages, and processed meats. These are your key sources that Americans are getting most of their saturated fat from. Reducing that and replacing it with plants can help your body not only generate the DHA that it needs, but transport it into the brain where it can help your brain function. There it is. I love when the science, it's 2023 before this study comes out and elucidates why it's important to remove the animal saturated fats from our diet, replace it with omega-3 rich foods like seeds and beans and greens, and get that rich ALA content 50 times more than what's measured in the blood is, is the ALA that's being converted into DHA and supplied to our brain when we do not flood it with saturated fats from an animal-based diet. Here it is. Be smart, folks. This will help you be smart. This will help your brain function at its highest levels when we are getting our omega-3s from plants in its proper ALA conversion. Remember, if you're taking DHA, it's the bottom rung of the ladder that does not supply any of the rest of the five because it's a unidirectional conversion. It, DHA cannot convert to any of the other forms. When you provide ALA, it can convert to all six forms. So you're supplying, when you supply that ALA, you're getting every single form that the body and the brain needs. Remember that MSFS uh, uh, transporter is actually transporting ALA into the brain too to protect it. It's a neuroprotective. So you protect your brain with ALA. You convert it to DHA much more than we'll ever need because we end up storing most of it and burning it off because we have so much conversion of DHA. That is not a problem. The problem is getting the DHA into the brain to make sure your brain can function. This is the number one omega-3 in the brain. It is the biggest amount of storage of omega-3 in our entire body is the brain. Get that DHA to the brain by eliminating or reducing dramatically animal saturated fats. Your brain will thank you. The plants, the plants are there just telling you, hey, we made this perfect for you in the number one spot, ALA. You can get all six forms. You can feed the brain and you don't have that saturated fat and most plant foods that will actually interfere with your body and your brain's ability to pull it up. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, give it a share, leave any comments or questions down below. I will for sure answer them. Let's get this information out to more people. If people really knew, I honestly believe they'd choose the right thing for themselves to improve their health, especially their brains, and make sure that they're providing the best foods for their family and their loved ones too as well. So let's get people healthy. 
Let's get people consuming the right types of foods that feed the brain so that we can all function at our best. That's why I want for you. It's why I do what I do. It's why I do Facebook Lives to get this information out because nobody else is talking about this transport system and why it's dysfunctioning. I want to bring you that information so now you know. Thank you for watching. Tune in next week. I've got a great report on taurine. Yes, some great new studies on taurine and why taurine deficiency is not a problem in vegans. I know that sounds contrary to what most people think, but I do have one coming up and Katie Owens. Ah, thank you, Katie, for joining me. Uh, always good to see you and hear from you. Um, again, let's get this information out there so more people can benefit from this. If we treat our body right and put the right things in our mouth, we can function at our best ability. That's what I want for you. Enjoy your day. Live healthily.